Alexa, do you like Siri? I don't have an opinion on that. You know, that's funny because I, I walked in, the, I have two Alexas. I walked in on a conversation and they were bad mouth and Siri. They were both but when talking. I walked in, they got all quiet about it. That's the and way now that listen it works. to her. Like in public, oh, no, I don't really have an opinion. Oh, yeah. I wonder what they say about you. <laughs> they were, luckily, they were talking about, about Siri, Siri and not me. Alexa, play our wake up open. Does she know that? What do you want to hear? Wake up. Alarm for what time? <laughs> You're so annoying. <laughs> Alexa, play our wake up open. Alarm for what time? <laughs> we'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. <laughs> yeah, you're really going to want to get one of these because they're so, so helpful. Sweet. Alexa, play the. You do it. You do, it works for you. Okay, Alexa, play the wake up open. Here's a station you might like. Chris Odie? <laughs> yeah, Chris Odie. Oh, that's nice. Oh, it's very peaceful. I yeah. like her. It sounds like she, that. It sounds like that music that plays behind the audio bible. No, here's what here's what they're doing. <laughs> Alexa's like, we have conflict right now. Play something nice and light. That's what she did. Because me and her were conflict. It reminds me of this. Judges chapter seven. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura, <laughs> and listen to what they are saying. Does that's that our scripture like, today. Yeah, that is our scripture. A lot today. of people didn't grow up. With a mom who played the audio Bible. That's what it sounds 24 like, though. 24 hours Just, you know. a day, seven. And then it's all... And then they begin to whip Jesus. Ah! Oh, it's bad. No, when they go through the crucifixion, it's no good. And they would oftentimes... They acted out. They would oftentimes play at three in the morning. Yeah. And that's how you woke up. After watching the movie... Where they chopped the kid's head off. I, like, it was just a lot of... It was too much. It was too much for I me. don't want to go through the Savior. My, I just... Wait. Praise God, he's raised from the dead. We got a scripture. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. And uh, today we're going to read a scripture. We're going to pray over your day. We're going to have a good time today. Alexa, be quiet. Nope. He's going to keep playing music. <laughs> Alexa, be quiet. You need one of these. They're very helpful. They're so great. I always do what you want. But uh, we're talking today about what I was recapping in my oh, message. What a and great I actually, message. I actually had this in my notes. You didn't get to it. I wasn't able to get to it. Now, here, let's kind of set up the story a little bit. So Gideon, uh, he, he got all his men together, and then he said, hey, if you're afraid, yeah. go home. He said, hey, you're right. He's he had a lot. Too many men. God said, there's too many men. I can't deliver the Midianites into your hands, or else you'll get the glory. So he says, we've got to send some of the men home. So God said, tell, so Gideon, tell the men, if you're afraid, go home. And they're actually, right. they're actually at what was called the Fountain of Trembling. Like right. that literally was the name. They were camped by the Fountain of Trembling. I think that's a horrible place to camp right before a battle. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, thousands of men departed at this. Yeah. Okay. But obviously Gideon stayed. Right. And then brings us to Judges chapter 7 and verse 10. Then the Lord said, uh, wait, verse 10. But if you are afraid to fight, go down to the camp. So in, in another translation, yeah, go ahead. So he ends up going down to the camp. Yeah, he's talking to Gideon. He says, if you're afraid to go down to, the, to attack, go, right. go with your servant uh, Pura and listen to what they're saying at the enemy camp. Go down to the en He was going to the enemy camp. He wants you to go to the enemy camp right. with your servant. It's the middle of the night, by the way. If you're still afraid, go there and listen to what they're saying. But wait a second. If you're afraid, you weren't supposed to be there. Exactly. So God's looking at Gideon you're like, but you're afraid. So remember what God said, send all the people home who are afraid. Right. But Gideon didn't go home. He was battling his... He was battling fear. his fear. He decided that even though I'm dealing with fear, I'm going to stay. I love it. And then God has him go face his fear. Go down to the... In the middle of the night, go down to the enemy camp. What that you're afraid of. Yeah. And then it says this, and listen to what they're saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So they go down there and they're listening and they listen at this tent and this guy's describing this dream. I saw like a, a loaf of bread come into and plow over our tent. I had the that tent one of Midian. <laughs> so it's a really Same strange dream. dream. Mine, other, was, mine was a pizza though. The other guy says that can be none other than Gideon. Right. He's, he's going to defeat us. And so Gideon like hears this message. He's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to win. <laughs> I win. And, the, and God said this to him. He said, after listening to the enemy talk, your hand will be strengthened. Right. So what, what I'm trying to say today is that even in the midst of his fear, he stood. Right. He denied the voice of his fear and decided to stay even though when fear was allowed to go home. He didn't retreat. But he could have gone. Had he gone home, he'd have missed what God had positioned 
to bring him the confidence he needed to win the battle. And, and this is a really good point. So people struggle with fear. Right. And it causes them to go home. It causes right. them to turn back. It, Instead of sending their fear it, home. It, it, fear can be like a prison that decides for us. It doesn't allow us to make our own decisions because we're afraid. Well, I can't try that because I'm afraid. I can't do that because I'm afraid. I'm dealing with fear. So God doesn't drive out fear by just telling you to say no to fear. Right. Instead, he has a different voice for you. And his voice will give you strength, right? This was a, a dream from the Lord. So he heard the dream of God, the interpretation, right? And it, the Bible says that after you hear this, you will be strengthened because strength will drive out your fear. Our job is to make sure that we don't let our fear make us run, make us hide, make us right. go into a cave. We just stand in our fear. We, we deny its power to control us. And then we allow the strength of God to drive fear out. And I like, I like the way that you're saying that because fear doesn't control me. I control my fear. Yeah. And that's, there's a big difference in that. When fear is, is driving your decision making, if fear is driving what you will do and what you won't do, then you got to get fear out the driver's seat. Because fear wasn't designed to be in the driver's seat. No. Get out. Make, fear makes bad decisions. Get out the seat. Yeah. You're going to get into this seat over here. Yeah. And so, then you're the designated driver. I like that. I just thought of that. You're the because fear, fear's all messed up. He shouldn't be behind the wheel. He's a drunk driver. He's a drunk driver. <laughs> so as soon as you notice that fear is trying to get in the driver's seat, and I wasn't going to say this is in my mind. I remember I won't say the name, but a buddy of mine. I was a designated driver in we were in college, and I never I did I didn't drink. I you just, were the non-drinker. I was a non-drinker because well, I'm not I'm not fun when I'm drunk. Just so you know that. Okay. And then my mind went through the thing, why would I want to drink something that makes me not only not fun, but dumber? I need every one of these little brain cells firing all the time. I'm not, <laughs> I can't maybe I'm afford not as even smart one. as you guys. Some, some of you out there, I'm not that smart. You can't afford them. I, I need them all. Keep all them cells. So <laughs> gotta, my, gotta so, be about my wits. So we get done, and, and he's falling all over the place, and he gets in, and, and we had this thing where you called it. He go, so you called, you remember this? Oh, shotgun. shotgun yeah. or dry. What stunk was, is if you called driving. So if, if you were slow, it was my car, we're going to lunch, and one of my buddies goes, call driving, no more calls, then I had to let them drive my car. Now, if they drive my car, they don't drive my car responsible. We're <laughs> hitting curbs. Because they're We're your going friends. through bushes. This is what guys Cause, do to cause each that's other. What, <laughs> that's what we do, right? That's what a good friend does. It is. No, I agree. I was, it is. I was, I was driving my buddy Troy's truck. Okay. And they had the orange cones in the road. I hit about a quarter mile of every one of them. Just joke, joke. And he's like, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop, it, stop it. Okay. Anyway, so he gets in the drive, and I go, he goes, I call driving, no more calls. And I had to say, I don't care what you call. Because he's drinking. Because you're drunk. No, you don't get to drive. You don't, I, know, I know the rules of you the game. And this is the same thing for you. Fear calls driving. It does not matter. You don't get to drive my life. You oh, don't like get to that. drive my day. You don't get to drive. Get out of the seat. Yeah. I'm driving my emotions today, yeah. and I'm gonna, and I'm allow, and I love this this part that God brings then things into your world to strengthen you up. I love that. Could be just could be a coworker, could be somebody, or could be a spouse, somebody out there. Well, you've got this. Well, even the enemy knows your name and is afraid. He used the enemy. Even the enemy knows your name is afraid. There's a story about how uh, these these Hebrews, these Jewish people, were trying to use the name of Jesus to drive out, to, to exercise demons. And so they would go to a demon-possessed man and they would say, in the name of Jesus, who Paul serves, come out of him. Well, see, they weren't believers in Jesus. They were trying to... So, so the enemy was like, well, Paul I know, and Jesus I know, but I don't know you. And <laughs> Right. But I want you to know, when you became a believer, the enemy even knows who you are. And they're scared because the enemy is under your feet. Right. So he even, dis he even listens to the enemy tell, we're afraid. And the, the Gideon's going to win. And the only thing the enemy has power is a lie. That's all the enemy has. Right. It's the only thing he has. You'll never win. You, you not, can never do it. So it, the more he can get you afraid and get you to go on home, right. that's the only way he can win. Because he knows that when we stand, as Christians, when we stand in the name of Jesus, he knows he loses. So step one isn't that you're not afraid. No. Step one is that even though you're afraid and fear is screaming for you to run back and retreat to your cave, you stand anyways. You just stand there regardless of the wind. You stand there regardless of the storm. You say, I'm not going to let fear control me. That's step one. Step two is that the, the word of God comes and gives you strength. The spirit of God on the inside of you is screaming louder than the fear now. Where, now, where am I going to get it? I think number one, 
God's house. Oh, praise God. Right? Don't yeah. you? And you know that. When you show up on Sunday, and oftentimes people tell me, man, I came in, I was broken, and I didn't know what I was going to do, but I left. Now, I, I left knowing there, what to do. Yeah, nothing out there had changed. The only thing that changed was they got the word that strengthened them to know that, wait a second, me and God can do it this week. And so let me, That's the only difference. Let me just launch into this. When he said, I saw a loaf of bread come in oh. and plow out. The bread, Jesus said, the word of God, man does not live by bread alone, but at every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God's word is bread. Jesus is like, I'm, he's the word, and right. he says, I'm the bread of life. So what was it that defeated the Midianites? It was the, the word, word in Gideon that drove the fear out it was the word in Gideon that drove the enemy to destroy each other. It was the word in Gideon that gave the victory. And it's so simple if we just learn how to believe God's word instead of what our fear is telling us. That's so good. Let's pray over their day. Yeah. David, Father, Lord, we ask, we thank you, praise you. We know that we all deal with times and things in life where we're afraid. But we're going to be the ones that, like Gideon, stand in our fear. And then we're going to allow your word to get in there and strengthen us up and build us up. That oftentimes we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know that you hold our tomorrow. And we know that you are the way maker, that you'll find a way, Lord. And so we pray, Lord, that you continue to bring to us moments and things that strengthen us, that your word brings us strength, that wake up brings us strength, that church brings us strength every day, that we can go forth in victory in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, next we want you to enjoy this teaching. Hope you like today. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Share it. Hashtag wake up. Just hashtag it. Every week we're going to pick out some, some and we're going to give away some coffee cups. Yeah. And if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe you're driving in your car right now listening to this on the radio or maybe you've been, you just stumbled upon this on Facebook or YouTube. While we you're driving, you... just grab your phone real quick no, and text stop. us. No, stop. <laughs> no. Keep both hands on the wheel. Okay, my bad. But we want you uh, to subscribe to us on YouTube and you can watch this in your own leisure whenever you want. It posts every single night. Whatever time you wake up in the morning, you can join us Is for that... our daily Bible study on YouTube. You can go to wakeuptv.tv right. or you can text, if you just remember this number, 84483, text wake up, all one word, to 84483. How was that rhythm? Was that good rhythm? I think it was great. 84483. Eight, eight, you sound like one of those little ads. If you dial now, 84483 eight, four, eight, for every one of your needs. Jesus said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. God's saying the same thing to you today. He's saying, truly, you will become, you will become a great and powerful nation. Truly, you will become mighty in the land. Truly, I will bless all peoples through you. For I have chosen you. You are mine. He's saying that to you today. You can't stop it. You can't stop what God's going to do in your life. This week's going to be a different week for you. See, he smashes that clay vessel of the voice of worthless, the voice of meaningless, the, vo the voice of aimlessness, the voice of I'm not pretty enough, the voice of I wish I looked different, the voice of I'm not as good as they are, the voice of I'm not as smart as other people, the voice of I don't have the right education or the right pedigree or the right social status, I don't have the right experiences in my life, I have failure all up in my business. But God is the great redeemer and he says, I have redeemed you. Be not afraid, I have called you by name, you are mine.